The trees shall clap their hands, everyone. The joy of the coming kingdom. Adonai yim loch. The Lord is king. Now, the Lord will be king forever and ever. Amen. That's what Shabbat's all about. Remind us, who is the creator? Who is the king? Who is the sovereign one? So again, let's clap along. We'll get the slides going here in a moment. Adonai Yimloch.
Let's hear it, everyone. Adonai Yibloch, Leolam Ba'ed. Lord reigns forever. Yeah. 
Come in, talk to our brothers about this Torah, about this Messiah. You may be seated. Oh boy, okay, we got everything memorized here today, so no slides. But uh, it's uh, Shabbat Matot, uh, the tribes, some more details for the tribes out of the book of Numbers. And uh, Jim, you got my piece of paper up there, the exact readings, but uh, Numbers 32? Okay, we're in English, Numbers 32. Numbers 32, verse 25. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben said to Moses, saying, Your servants shall do as my Lord commands. Our small children, our wives, our livestock, and all our animals will be there in the cities of Gilead. And your servants shall cross over every armed person of the legion for Hashem to do battle as my Lord speaks. Concerning them, Moses commanded Elazar the Kohen, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel, Moses said to them, if the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will cross the Jordan with you, everyone armed for battle before Hashem, and the land is conquered before you, you shall give them the land of Gilead as a heritage. But if they do not cross over armed with you, then they will take their heritage among you in the land of Canaan. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben spoke up, saying, as Hashem has spoken to your servants, so shall we do. Amen. Well, you know, the always many lessons embedded in the, the weekly synagogue reading, the Parsha. Uh, but this is an uh, interesting note here, uh, because if you get the context, uh, you know, all the tribes to go in, conquer Canaan, the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but uh, uh, Manasseh and, Ephra- and uh, Gad, God, uh, request the nice farmland on the other side of the Jordan. Uh, guess what? Basically, in the country of Jordan today, uh, interesting how uh, the UN is debating why Jews are on the West Bank when in the Bible our people are even on the East Bank <laughs> of the Jordan. I mean, we're all the way to Baghdad, but you know, things change in history. Uh, someday uh, the boundaries will be set as God wants them. But if you caught the detail, I thought, found quite interesting. Uh, the Moshe, you know, seeks the Lord. He says, well, you guys can have this property outside of Canaan, but you got you to gotta be in the battle with us. You know, got to have some skin in the game, right? Uh, and so if you read the whole parsha there, they fight in the army, the IDF, to conquer the land, but then they will take some land in a different place. Well, all that to say, we're all one people. Amen. We're all one body, if you use the New Testament analogy. And uh, even, uh, well, it may not even be your personal battle, but we all stand together, don't we? We all help each other. We all are supposed to uh, be unified together. And uh, that's where the power of the Ruach is. And uh, so you have to commend the tribes of Manasseh and God for, uh, for saying, well, okay, this isn't even a battle for our real estate, but we're going with our brothers to help them. So uh, how about you? You helping the brothers today? Helping the sisters today? Uh, it's a good lesson from the Parsha. Uh, Jeremiah chapter Amen. 2. Yermiahu chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And I'll chant a few verses in the Hebrew, and then uh, you ladies can divvy up uh, whoever the English. It's just three verses. We'll also have a New Testament reading coming, so plenty of, plenty of blessing to share. So Yermiahu, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. The word of Hashem came to me, saying, Go and call out in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said Hashem, I recall for you the kindness of your youth, the love of your nuptials, your following me into the wilderness, into an unsown land. Israel is holy to Hashem, the first of his crop. All who devour it will be held guilty. Evil shall call upon them the word of Hashem. Also, it goes, I'm sorry, and then one of the other ladies can take verse uh, 4 through 10, please. Hear the word of Hashem, O house of Jacob, and all families of the house of Israel. Thus said Hashem, what wrong did your fathers find in me that they distanced themselves from me and pursued futility and became futile? 
But they did not say, where is Hashem who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of desert and pit, and in a land of waste and in the shadow of death, in a land through which no man passed and where no person settled? I brought you into a fruitful land to eat its fruit and bounty, but you came and contaminated my land and made my heritage into an abomination. The Kohanim did not say, where is Hashem? Those charged with teaching the Torah did not know me. The shepherds rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, and they went after those that cannot avail. Amen. Amen. Vayidavar Adonai Elahai Lemohor Haloch Bakarata Baozne Yerushalayim Lemor ko amar Adonai zecharti lecha zecharti lach chesed neuraich ahavta beke kelul te taich lechtech acharei. Bamidbar, the air it's low, Zeruah, Amen. So the Haftorah ties in in the wilderness. Again, numbers, how to get organized, how to walk with God, uh, how to fight the battles. And Jeremiah seems to be calling up the remembrances of God's faithfulness, but we weren't always faithful. He says, what wrong did I do to you that you turned to Baal? Adonai is not good enough? Um, it's a rather strong indictment in the day of Jeremiah and actually leading to um, the destruction of Jerusalem, 586 uh, BCE. But, uh, you know, again, these lessons are very relevant. And feel free to apply it because uh, God is good. Amen. God is good, and yet too often we are the ones turning away from Him. And there, there's really no excuse. All the blessings He's given us, every breath we have, every day, many good things from above. And uh, so, yeah, take it personally. It's like, why would we turn to a different God? Why would we ignore the one true?